<laughs> well, apparently it's already full. Yeah. Standing they, room only. They, they may let, right, they may let some people in standing room only in, in a bit. Um, so maybe but the governor and uh, Mr. Shimkis may come through here and greet people. Oh, great. I'm going to ask the nice lady here. Money's there for math grants, and the money's there to fund the university, so there has to be no layoffs. Madigan won't allow it. We can fund $160 million to our universities right today. The money is sitting there idle. It's in special purpose funds. It's not needed. It's gathering dust, and that could go to EIU. Madigan won't allow it. He's trying to leverage you to force a tax hike, and that's baloney. He was a nice word for it. You guys should let your representatives around the state know, stand up the Madigan, free up that money. We could fund EIU right today. We could fund our math grants right today. He's trying to leverage you to get a tax hike. This is what we got to change our government so it's working for you. It's an honor for me to work for you every day. I'm a volunteer. I ain't taking any money. I'm doing this because I love Illinois. I was a business builder for 32 years, and who I worked for was teachers in Illinois. I work for teachers in their retirement system, building businesses, using their pension money to put it into growing businesses in Illinois and around America. And I'm darn proud of the fact I generated more than double the stock market returns for 32 years. So our teachers in Illinois got a much better retirement. They made a lot more money because of our success. And I said I got sick and tired of watching our schools be defunded by the legislature. We've cut school funding here forever, for years and years, and we're dead last for 50 out of 50 for state support for education. We're going to change that. We want to be one of the top performing education states in America and put a lot more money into our schools, including into EIU. Every school, more money, that's where our money should go. Instead of the bureaucracy, the wasteful spending in Springfield is stunning. Stunning. I'm a business builder. I haven't been in government before. Now I've been in there a year. However bad you think my government might be, it's worse. The money, the billions of dollars wasted inside government that could go to our schools. It could go to EIU, it could go to our high schools, it could go to our elementary schools. We're changing the system. That's what this is about, changing the system. And here's the key, we gotta grow economically. We've got to grow our state. We're one of the worst performance states in America. And there's no reason, because we got the hardest working people in America, we got the best location in America, we should be kicking tails. Instead, we're one of the bottom five states for economic growth. And we won't fix any of our problems, and we won't fund our schools, or our pensions, or our health care, if we don't grow. That's a fact. We have fewer jobs than we had 17 years ago in Illinois. Did you know that? And we have lower average family incomes today than we had 17 years ago. Think about that. We're going the wrong way. Madigan and the Chicago machine has got us by the throats. That's what's going on. And we've got to break off that grip. That's what the fight's about. If we had just grown at the nation's average over the last 15 years, just the nation's average for 15 years, we wouldn't have needed the 2011 tax hike. We wouldn't have any unpaid bills. We wouldn't have a deficit, and we'd have $19 billion more today to put into EIU in our human services and our schools. Think about that. That's what this fight's about. Now, the main reason we're here, this gentleman, this guy's a superstar. He is one of the best public servants in Illinois. He's a superstar in the United States Congress. He's a veteran. He's an advocate for farmers. He's an advocate for small businesses. He's one of my best friends and one of my strongest allies. When I, I'm a workaholic. I love Illinois. I, I travel seven days a week around this great state. When I was running for governor, he was there with me more than anybody. 
and he was with me from Danville to Harrisburg. Everywhere, everywhere in his district and even outside his district, he was working at Fannie because he loves this state. He loves the people of Illinois. He loves this community. And he's been a, he's been a stalwart. He's pro-business. He's pro-growth. He's pro-farmer. He's endorsed by the Farm Bureau. He's endorsed by the National Federation of Independent Business. He's all about education funded, and he's trying to get a handle on the uh, hostile to business, hostile to growth policies coming out of Washington, D.C., and he's standing up and fighting for the people of Illinois. I want to introduce to you now an outstanding public servant, an outstanding member of Congress, and we need John Shimkus back in office again. John Shimkus. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's great to be back. I see the mayor here. Mayor, stand up for everybody. Come on, mayor. Thank you. Oh yeah, we're back there too. Thank you very much for showing up. We have a, you know, we do have a, a, a mayor's committee, and we appreciate your support and being on that because it shows you've been around locally. And the communities know you're trying to help. Life in this race. Uh, I'm 100% pro-life. I always have been. So if this is a pro-life issue, and it's, 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 it, and if if the national right to life hasn't asked me to be on it yet. Um, but, I have one other question for you. Okay, he mentioned how there's less jobs today uh -huh. than there were 17 yeah. years ago. Um, but there's also an all-time low in unemployment. Well, no, that's not true. We're, we're historical. Yeah, we're low. Historically, historic. Yeah, no, historically, unemployment zero. Full employment historically is at three and a half percent. So we're still at five, six here. Right, so it's very, very low compared to what it was. Which means that yeah, but it should be working, but if you don't have full, full employment. Full employment is historically three point five percent. Okay. So that means, and 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 the jobs that we're creating are not, you know, jobs of high paying quality. So just because you have a job doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean it's one you can raise a family on. Well, we've really come full circle because the jobs were the, we were always taught go to college or you won't be able to get a job, and now the jobs that are available are those blue collar jobs that the baby boomers are. Well, and that's why you've you know got a I mean? great community so, college system. That, I mean, I'm not one to well, say we you've did. got to have. We, we do have a community college, yeah. but that's all in jeopardy kind of right now too, which is. Well, I mean, that's just you know that's what the once the state has to address its funding problems. Absolutely, funding as a whole, budget. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. Well, that's all just, yeah. Yeah. No, but I, we'll get back to you on that issue. But it's, you know, it's. You know, um, I, I just want to ask you. I know you're a, an alumni of Southern. Um, I got my MBA from SIU. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So um, Eastern is about to lay off almost 200 people, and the, in in total since August they will have done 261 layoffs. Yeah. It's it's not a challenge. It's collateral damage, and um, you know, I mean, we're really suffering. Um, what I think will be will end up being irreparable damages. So I'm, I'm just curious, where do you stand with that? How, how can we move forward? What think, are we doing you know, to fix that? I think that the state, the governor, and Michael Madigan need to get a budget. And it's, it's, you know, you know, the Democrats could right now pass a budget and override his veto. You know that? I, they can I, do it on their own. The governor could have done line items. But you do know that. But you do know that. I mean, that's, so that's... It, it shouldn't be partisan, though. No, I mean, it shouldn't, but, but they could. Are, are they have a supermajority. If they wanted to pass a budget, they could, and they could override the veto. Jeremy is. 